Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are back in Zoom court for round four of Judge Middleton v Samuel Perdue, aka Samir Siraj Mauro Bay, for his pre-trial hearing. There are plenty of ups and downs in this one, so let's get straight into it. Good afternoon, sir. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, I can. Thank you. Good go. afternoon, Mr. Mauro Bay. This is Judge Middleton. Deborah Davis is here. And we're ready to do the pretrial conferences in your cases. I'm going to call them, and then we got some things we're going to address. I came in early from a meeting, so we could start early because I understand you have to be at work. Uh, what time do you have to be at work? Four o'clock. All right. Well, we'll be well done before then. He works. I wonder if he pays taxes to the U.S. government on that income. There are three cases, plus some civil infractions. File 202073ST alleges driving with a suspended, revoked, or denied driver's license having allegedly occurred on September 17th of 2020. File 202653 alleges driving suspended second offense and forged or false license and speeding that allegedly occurred on October, excuse me, November 25th of 2020 here in St. Joseph County. Speeding charges attached to that. File 21213ST is a charge of driving with a suspended license, second offense, false operator's license and speeding. That allegedly occurred on January 31st of 2021. So there are three driving suspended cases, two forged license cases, and two speeding cases, but three separate incidents. What is the deal with soft sits and speeding, especially this year? I've covered more soft sits getting stopped for speeding this year than in previous years. The defendant is charged under the name Samuel Perdue. He uh, goes by Siraj, S-I-R-A-J, I think, Maro, M-A-U-R-O, Bay, B-E-Y. So we're talking about the same person. First of all, Mr. Maro Bay, let's recap some things. We've had a number of hearings in this case, and the matter was set for a previous last pretrial prior to a jury trial. You didn't appear for the last pretrial and bench warrants issued. Then you appeared for the jury trial, but it was adjourned because you didn't show up for the last pretrial. You posted bond in each of those matters. And I want to reconfirm something. You've told me since the very outset that you don't wish to have an attorney appointed to assist you. Uh, I am ready and willing to appoint a lawyer to help you either as counsel or advisory counsel. But every time I suggest that, you decline. Do you wish me to have an attorney appointed to assist you with this? Hmm, what do you guys think? Do you think after being held in contempt and spending however long he spent in jail before posting bond, he has finally come to the realisation that representing himself is going to be pretty difficult. Let's see. Um, I do not waive my rights whatsoever, um, but I do not want an attorney. Wait, what? An attorney? That's not how you say attorney, dude. All right, that's been consistent. And also, I just yeah. want to say... Um, I'm, I'm making a special appearance in my right. proprio persona. Well, you're here specially or otherwise, and you wish to represent yourself in this matter. I just love those grins and looks from Deborah Davis, the prosecutor, every time he says something dumb. I too would find it difficult to keep a straight face under these circumstances. When we discussed this last time, I said, if you have, if you're going to represent yourself, then you need to do it right. You need to show up at the appointed time, which you have done. 
Uh, if you have pleadings you wish to file, you have to file them and provide a copy to the prosecutor, which you have done. So let me go through the things that you filed with the court and see if Ms. Davis agrees. Okay, here we go with the dumb filings. This should be fun. You filed one of these, I think, for each case. There is one called Exhibit 1, Affidavit of Fact, Writ of Discovery um, for the 202073 case and the civil infraction that's attached to that. Then you filed a Writ of Discovery Affidavit of Fact in each of the cases. Does that document require me to make any ruling or anything, or you simply wanted to have that on file? Your Honor, um, and before he responds that, I don't have any of those in my files. Oh, you don't? No. You came to the courthouse. Uh, you didn't get these? No. He's uh, talked about them each time he's come in, but he has not provided any to our office. Well, some of these are printed on 11 and a half by 14 paper. It's hard to find something to print that, but I will make sure that you get a copy of each of these documents. Thank you. I think she put them in on, in on base. Anyway, regarding the writs of discovery affidavit of fact, is there anything you want me to do with that or you simply wanted to place that on file? Um, I had to, I, so, um, so everything I do, I have to place on public record. So I, so I let everyone know uh, what's going on. So, um, so I basically have to have to, um, anytime before court, I have to, you know, send in my affidavit so I can let the court know what's going on, um, prior to me being there. Um, All right, so well, I've accepted one, yeah. these. They've been date stamped December 1st. They're placed in the on-base filing system, and I will provide copies of each of these to the prosecutor. Right, but, um, those are on but file. Also, it's my understanding. Well, let me, let me recap what else, what else you filed. You filed a document called 1508 point, specifically mentioned identification documents, 18 USC 1028, and an accompanying house resolution. Yes. I received that for filing. I'll provide a copy to the prosecutor. You filed a position statement of certification from the Pennsylvania House of Representatives from 1933 right to no law request. I Again, Deborah's puzzled face on these irrelevant filings are comedy gold. I've received that, date stamped it, and I will provide a copy to the prosecutor. Sweet. You provided a copy of the Constitution of the United States of America North Continent, the preamble and the Constitution, and you also provided a copy of the Bill of Rights. We're all familiar with those, but I'll accept it for filing and provide a copy to the prosecutor. This is just wasting the time of the court at this point. Why would you file a copy of the Constitution and Bill of Rights? I mean... What does he hope to gain from that? The office also filed a document called Legal Notice, Name Declaration, Correction, Proclamation, and Publication. Yes. And sealed. And I've received that, date stamped it, and we'll provide a copy to the prosecutor. Then you filed something called United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Uh, that's a twenty-eight, twenty-nine page document from the United Nations. I'm not sure on the date of, it is, 2007. And that's also date stamped December 1st and a copy is, will be provided to the prosecutor. And that filing is a waste of paper because he is not indigenous. Moors are not native to America. Then you filed a copy of a Treaty of Peace and Friendship dated 1787 between Morocco and the United States. And that is a four page copy apparently of a treaty from 1787. Again, that's date stamped. It's been received for filing. We'll provide a copy 
to the prosecuting attorney. Again, another irrelevant filing, because he is not from Morocco, nor is he a descendant of the Moroccan Empire. All right, so I've accepted your filings. You wish them to be on the record, and they are. Thank now you very we much. Have some, we have some things we have to discuss. But also... You've got, all right, what else did you want to I, say? I apologize. I wasn't trying to cut you off. Um, but also, um, it's, it's from my understanding that all affidavits... Uh, must be answered, or else they stand in law, as law. So, I, I, so I'm, I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping that you all will uh, review all my documentation, and um, and and answer to my um, affidavit, please. Okay, but when he does review it and rule on it, you should accept that ruling and move on, right? All right, let me rule on that. This is not a legal document in per se. It's not a motion. It's not a, uh, it's just a declaration that there is no answer. I've accepted them for filing. I'm not requiring the prosecutor to file an answer and the court won't be filing any answer, but I've accepted your documents. So that's my ruling on that. All right, let's go through this. But I also uh, challenged jurisdiction from day one right, and that was yeah. never an answer. You've made your motion, and I... No, it's not a motion. All right, well, I decline your challenge of jurisdiction. But you don't have the authority to. You have to prove jurisdiction. You have to physically prove jurisdiction with, like, paperwork and documentation. It's, it's not because you just want it, and I mean that respectfully. Right. Well, certainly they have to prove venue, which is where the crime alleged, where the crime committed at trial. But you made a motion, and I declined it. So you can appeal it if you're convicted. You'll have you've preserved these objections for appeal. Right now, you're presumed to be not guilty. You haven't been convicted of anything. You're challenging jurisdiction. Yes. You're challenging these things by answer. I've denied them. If you are convicted, you would have a right to appeal your denial of your motions. So I'm preserving each of your motions, but I'm denying them. But if you wish to appeal it, if the event you're convicted, um, you have a right to do that. So understood. That's how that worked. All right. But, now let's but also talk... for the record, they're not motions; they're affidavits of facts. All right. Well, okay. I'll accept them as affidavit of facts. You preserved you. your your objection. Now... Yes, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Treaty of Peace and Friendship is fact. I don't think anyone will argue with you there. What they have to do with your speeding and driving without a license charge is, well, I don't know. Now, there's three separate incidents where you allegedly were driving, and at least two of them you were speeding. Um, the prosecutor has filed a motion to join all of those three cases in one trial. What's your response to that? Uh, she's saying rather than have three separate jury trials on this, I request to join them all for one trial. Um, all for one trial. Yeah. You're entitled under the law to have three separate trials. Uh, one for the January 21 case, one for the November of 20 case, and one for the October or September of 20 case. There are three separate incidents. Prosecutor contends they show a pattern of continuing to drive without uh, a valid Michigan license, but so she's moved to join them. But it's your right to have them tried one at a time if that's what you wish. So the prosecutor filed a motion to join them into one trial. Um, do you have a position on that? Um. Well, um, I definitely requested a trial by my national peers, but I know that's not going to happen. Um, but um, no, I don't. I don't want them all to be combined. So the defendant objects. Ms. Davis, you wish to speak to that? Your Honor, I stand on my pleadings as filed. I filed a motion with a brief attached, acknowledging uh, the court rule uh, under which we're seeking this. It, for judicial efficiency, for cost involved with these uh, and the facts themselves, I believe that 
the, the court uh, should join them together to have one trial. Thank you. All right. One wrinkle to this, Mr. Morrow Bay, is if you have one trial, the prosecutor gets one shot at convicting you. You have to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. We have one trial, it's all over at one trial. If there's three separate trials, they have three separate attempts to prove the charge. Um, so that's something to consider. However, Understood. Uh, you, I'm gonna grant your objection. It certainly would be more judicially efficient to join these into one trial and do um, it in one day. But there's substantial prejudice if there's a trial and the jurors know that you've done this three times in uh, 70 or 80 days, uh, your defense is essentially the same to all three cases. But I think your risk of prejudice outweighs the prosecutor's desire to do this in a one case efficient manner. Um, I see, I see. All right, so I'm gonna, we'll set these um, all for the same day, but we're gonna only do one at a time. Now, and, um, the next and day, I, we now if, I, if, I, if I wanted to change this at a later date, is that is that a thing I could do or is that just? Um, no, I guess if you change your mind and decide, I'm gonna set all three cases for the same day. Uh, but we, unless you agree, we're only going to try one case. Let's say, for example, we set all three cases and uh, officer so-and-so uh, is having a baby on that day. When they ask for an adjourn that, we could adjourn that and try one of the other cases. So we're going to set all three to make sure we can do at least one. And if you change your mind and you agree to have them joined into one case, you need to tell us by uh, a certain date. Now, Deborah, I've been looking at the dates. Uh, I've already scheduled, we lost the jury day we had set for this because Ms. Mr. Morrow Bay didn't show up for the pretrial. So we lost that date or we've done with at least one of these. Uh, we've scheduled everything through January and February, which takes us to March 9th. That's a Wednesday. Mr. Morrow Bay, are you available on Wednesday, March 9th? March 9th. Um, I will be. All right. I'm going to set up for Wednesday, March 9th, 2022 at 830. All three cases will be set for the same time. No work for me that day, I guess. Free trials in one day should be fun. Unless, of course, he accepts the very generous plea deal offered to him later on by the prosecutor. If defendant wishes to have them join, you have to tell us by February. Twenty fifth. Okay. Mr. Purdue, have you been provided with the dash cam video of that uh, um, incident? Oh, my name is Mr. Bay. I'm sorry, Mr. Bay. And I have not. We discussed this yesterday, Your Honor, and it was uh, I, the defendant and I discussed how I would like to have some direction from the court regarding giving him this video uh, with a protective order that he would not disseminate it or use it for anything other than the purpose of preparing for trial. Yes, I would release it on those conditions. Otherwise you'd be in contempt, but you're representing yourself and you're entitled to have. So video will be provided. Yes, we have them here sitting on uh, the staff's desk and they did confirm an address that is a proper address for the defendant to be able to mail those out. So those will probably, if the mail hasn't gone out today, today, right. but not put, put what you want in the protective order. But Mr. Uh, 
they you can have these videos you can't disseminate them share them but okay no, TikTok, um, you can have them uh to review and prepare for your defense so i can't, right, that's, I can't the, that's people, the first case i can't show people that i was traveling in the videos and that well, you can show it to people driving. at your house but you can't post it on any social media if you do you're going to be in contempt you can show it to people. Uh, you can't post it on any social media until this trial is completed. Or make uh, any re reproductions of it. He only wants these videos so he can present himself as a victim to his buddies. Just remember though, if you do see any of these dashcam videos anywhere before the trial is done, you will know that he ignored the protective order to post them online and could be held in contempt. If I find them, I will of course refrain from posting them until after the trial. I wouldn't want to incur the wrath of Judge Middleton, even though I am on a different continent. Correct. All right. The next case is 20 two zero. I'm going to bring these next people in and mute them. 202653. That allegedly occurred on November 25th of 2020. Uh, that contains a speeding charge and a driving suspended charge. What's the status of that? Your Honor, that case has not been resolved and on base says it can't connect to the servers. So I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, John Hoffmeister, this is a Michigan State Police case. There were two other troopers that assisted and responded, and there is a dash cam for that one. And a driving record. Yes. All right, same thing, same protective order. But you're entitled to have the evidence that the prosecutor intends to introduce against you. Uh, Mr. Bay, I'd give you a piece of advice. There are a couple of speeding cases in here. The most important speeding case, which sets out the standard the prosecutor has to meet, is called People versus Ferency. I don't have the citation. It's F-E-R-E-N-C-Y. I'd suggest you may wish to take a look at that case. Uh, we've got Hoffmeister and two other troopers. Okay. F E R E N C Y. All right. Then the last case, or the most recent case, is 2021. Allegedly occurred January 1st, 31st. It charges driving suspended and false license. And uh, I believe there's also a speeding attached to that. Um, Ms. Davis, the complaining officer in that case is Jesse Raymond. That one might have Sergeant Steers, who was in the front seat with him, if that was in the village of Centerville. And there is a dash cam for that one. All right, so certified driving record dash cam. Um, so this court doesn't recognize the right to travel? Yes, it does. You know uh, what the right to the travel right, is, right? Thompson versus Smith, the right to travel. Right? All right. Yes, I recognize the right to travel. I don't recognize the right to drive without a license and go 84 miles an hour in a 55 mile an hour zone. So you have a right to travel. You don't have the right to drive is where you and I have a fundamental disagreement. Speeding, but, driving right. without a license, wrong plates, no plates, no registration, no tags, etc., has all been ruled as non-arrestable offenses, and I've been arrested. Well, the offenses on their own aren't arrestable, but add them all together, and the fact that you continue to repeat those offenses means you will get arrested. Oh, and Thompson v. Smith does not support any of your claims. My guess is you haven't even read that case because if you actually did, it states that cities have the right to require permits for the use of roads. Yes. Cal versus Farley. This, these are, this is, um, 
these are these are um, court case documents right here that uh that we we keep ignoring. I don't know why we keep ignoring these. Well, these Supreme from? Court case documents right here. Oh, all right. The right to travel was was ruled in the Supreme okay, Court. Okay, I'm right? familiar with it. Anyway, you, you didn't. So, file on, on, but you can't. But you can't just gloss past it, though. I mean, because you right, have to. All right. It. So you may. But it's okay for you to gloss over Thompson v. Smith without reading it. Look, the judge knows the difference between travelling and driving, and he knows that nothing of what you are presented has any merit. If you believe it does, then appeal it. That's how this works. If you are going to represent yourself, then at least read the cases before you file them. This is ridiculous. You made a motion. We'll just accept it as this. I'll put it in order. Your motion to dismiss regarding the right to travel is denied. And so that also preserves your motion. You can appeal on that issue if you are convicted. So I didn't file a motion. Well, then file a motion if you want to argue it. But I didn't. That's uh, a, I didn't did just, I all right. Well, so now you're saying, so I'll accept your oral motion. It's not a motion. Denied. Well, your affidavit, whatever it is. Yes. Regarding the right to travel is denied. Your Honor, wow. so that the court is aware, I did speak to the defendant about this issue with uh, discovery materials and potential exhibits yesterday via telephone. But the people intend to file a motion in limine uh, based on Michigan Rules of Evidence 403 for exclusion of uh, evidence based on confusion or waste of time. Uh, again, I haven't seen all of these documents that he is intending to present, but uh, once I do see them, I suspect that we will be filing a motion in limine to have them uh, excluded from any discussion during trial. Well said, Deborah. Confusion and waste of time. That sums up this guy's whole defence. He shouldn't be allowed to waste the time of the court with any of these vexatious claims. You have 21 days to file a motion and he has 21 days to respond. Thank you, Your Honour. And Mr. Bay, you also have 21 days to file any further motion. I know. That's the affidavit I sent you. That's what it said. You have 21 days to respond to it. I just responded to it. I denied it. I'm advised that I got you have to deny it in paper. You have to send me something in writing with some more, with, with Samir Bay on it, and you have to de deny me as a national because I was traveling as a free national. All right, I'll put that in the order. Um, March 9th doesn't work. That's Judge Patterson's day. Does March 2nd? Um, honestly, I don't want to be, I, I don't want to come back to none of these courts. I, I really. I would I would love for y'all to um to actually uphold the law and not try to uphold these statutes against me. So I don't really um I don't really choose to the only reason why I'm even showing up is because if I don't show up, you're gonna send your 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 private mercenaries to come get me. And I don't have time for that. I have a family to take care of. So um that's well, the only reason I, why I'm I why I'm even giving this time to do. It's interesting you want me to uphold the law, but you don't want me to uphold the, uphold the statutes. Yeah, no. These aren't private mercenaries. They're uh, sworn deputies and employed by the County of St. Joseph. Um, anyway, I didn't bring these charges, Mr. Morrow Bay. The Sheriff's Department or the individual departments filed them. Um, and uh, the prosecutor is prosecuting them. And you're guess, a defendant. You also wish I'm not to a represent defendant. yourself. So I'm going to do and I can't represent myself. schedule this. I'm gonna do this for March 2nd, 2022 at 8 30. All three cases. Deborah, I would just inquire, was there a plea offer? Your Honor, after speaking with Miss the defendant yesterday, uh, the people would offer that if he were to plead in each case to allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code uh, and acknowledge the speeding violations, we would dismiss the remainder. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? 
Sure. If you would plead to the misdemeanor of allowing another person to violate the motor vehicle code, in the three open cases, we would dismiss all of the driving suspended, the registration, all of those, but you would also have to acknowledge the two speeding tickets and pay the fine for the infraction on those. He's posted quite a bit of bond. I think there might be bond money to apply, but let's talk about what that means, Mr. Babe. Okay. Uh, driving suspended is a misdemeanor. Driving suspended second is punishable by up to a year in jail. Driving suspended first is punishable by up to 93 days in jail. They both carry two points on your driving record and they require that your license be suspended. This is an interesting plea offer from the prosecutor that kind of takes me a little bit by surprise. She's offered to dismiss all of the driving suspended charges for a plea to three charges of allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code. It's a kind of a peculiar statute. It's under the Michigan uh, traffic code. It's found at 257.326. It's called allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code. It's punishable by a fine of up to $90 to, uh, to $100 and up to 90 days in jail. This is important. It carries no points and it does not go on your driving record. It doesn't go on your Michigan driving record and it doesn't carry any points. I can't think of the last time I put somebody in jail for allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code, but uh, it is punishable by up to 90 days in jail. And then the speeding charges are civil infractions punishable by a fine only. I'm gonna put this in the order that that's the offer. It's a very interesting offer. It would resolve all of the cases. I guess you could plead as the other would be you either Samuel Morrow Bay allowed Sammy Perdue to drive or vice versa, but it wouldn't affect your Michigan driving privileges and wouldn't go on your driving record. It's just got a lot of baggage on it. Your Honor. Yes. Also, the people would not object to a no contest plea in this matter. All right. That's interesting, too. I think at this point, she just wants to be done with the case because that's a really generous offer. Mr. Morrow Bay, no, by pleading guilty, you admit that you're guilty. By pleading no contest, you don't admit guilt, but you allow or accept that a conviction would enter. That makes this even more interesting. You could enter a plea of no contest saying, I don't plead guilty to this, but I will allow these convictions to enter for the purposes of the bargain uh, offer. Um, did you post your bonds through a surety company? Um, I believe so. All right, because I, I, I didn't know if I had cash or not. So I'll put this in the order and I'll put a, some sort of deadline in it. Let me repeat that. They, she offers to dismiss everything for one count of allowing another to violate the motor vehicle code. In each of the cases. Of, in each of the cases. Yes, with three counts. Plus okay. the two speeding counts. This will cost money uh, unlikely to result in a jail sentence and it would resolve all the cases and it would not affect your Michigan driving privileges. You could also plead no contest saying I don't plead guilty but I allow or accept that a conviction would enter. I'm going to put all this in a written order I don't want to put your address out here over the internet, but over the live feed, but Ms. Davis, you've got his current contact information. We do, sir. The address that you gave to our staff this week to mail out things, is that still the same address? That is correct. Okay, then yes, we will provide that address to the court, Your Honor. Uh, I'm not going to make you make a decision on that right now. It's a very interesting plea offer. Resolves everything resolves your and my disagreements on the right to travel. It results in all the cases being resolved, but 
nothing on your driving record other than the speeding tickets. So you can consider that, take a look at the statute, consult with people you consult with. Is he dumb enough to turn that deal down? Or do you think he will realise how sweet it is? It does sometimes look like the judge is getting through to him. On the other hand, it depends who else he has in his ear. Either way, I hope he makes the right decision. I'm still concerned that you don't have legal counsel, but we've done fine today. You and I have been able to transact our business in a respectful manner, and uh, that's good for all of us. So I'm going to put this in a written order. You can consider the prosecutor's plea offer, which would cost money, uh, but would not put anything on your record but a couple of speeding tickets. Ms. Davis, is there anything else we should place on this record? Just briefly, Your Honor, because of the trial date moving up, uh, you had requested that uh, the defendant notify the court by the 25th of uh, February whether or not he would agree to join. I just asked to move that up a little bit too. Yeah, move it up to February 15th. And it, the plea offer, if you could put it in the order that it's good for two weeks from today. So it should expire at 5 p.m. two weeks from today. All right. That would be December 16th. Michigan time. Yes, Michigan time. Sir, uh, as far as notifying the court or our office whether you'd like to accept that offer, you can either call our office or call the court and set up a plea date, uh, but please just make sure that you make contact with us if you're going to accept. Okay. All right, Mr. Mr. Bay, anything else you wish to place on the record? Um, I don't believe so. All right, consider a no contest plea to those three charges plus the speedings. You can contemplate that. It would certainly bring closure to all this. And uh, I'll send you a copy of the order, what we've done here today in the mail. And I will provide a copy of your pleadings to the prosecutor. Thank you, Ron. All right, thank you. Well, that was interesting. I think that went pretty well for him, apart from his motions or affidavits being denied. It will be interesting to see if he takes the plea deal. I do still feel he will want to take this all the way to trial, though. I guess we will have to wait and see. Anyway, guys, thank you once again for watching. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, if you would like to support me and get early access to videos like this, then please consider becoming a patron. Take care, and I will catch you in the next one.